Hello fellow aviators, today we are flying on United's Boeing 757 across the United States from New York to San Francisco. Welcome to San Francisco where the local time is approximately 8.30. Let's talk cockpit impressions. As a general aviation pilot, it was an eye-opening experience getting to visit the 757 flight deck after we landed. Everything just feels larger and heavier. The 757 shares the 767 cockpit. Mostly the yoke, panel, the windshield, and the autopilots are the same. The thrust levers are also borrowed from the 767. After we walk through the first class cabin, you enter the cockpit and step down. This famous step down is cool because they had to fit the round 767 cockpit in the 757's narrow cross section. The Boeing 757's large cockpit window lets in a lot of light and totally dominates the experience. And you can't ignore Boeing's 1980s style of tan cockpit interiors. You almost feel like you're sitting in an old Buick. Sitting down in the captain's seat, I was surprised how close my head was to the left side A pillar where the windshield meets the sliding window. It's almost like the pillar hangs over you in the periphery of your vision, giving you a feeling that this is a nice tight airplane packaged for speed. The two CRT screens in the middle are for your engine instruments showing engine RPMs and temperature, oil pressure, etc. The landing gear lever to the right and the autopilot at the top of the glare shield with controls for vertical speed, airspeed, and level roll modes, etc. Because the 757 is one of Boeing's first glass cockpit clean sheet designs, it doesn't have as many features in its avionic suites as modern airplanes. A good example is the 757's primary flight display does not show an altimeter tape to the right of the attitude indicator. It simply shows an airspeed tape to the left, unlike modern avionic systems. They don't have an altimeter tape like you would find on a modern Cessna 172 G1000 system or on a Boeing 787. 757 flight crews refer to the analog steam gauge altimeter to the right side of the primary flight display for altitude information. While differences like these are only quality of life things to pilots, it's a cool fun fact to point out and a cool piece of history about Boeing's evolution in avionics design. Control-wise, I've been told the yoke on the 757 are much heavier than on the 767 despite the 767 being a much larger plane. This is due to the hydraulic system and the overall control surfaces on the 757 design. For example, the 757 does not have import ailerons, maybe providing less roll leverage for the 757 controls. However, the plane has been noted by pilots as being stable and easy to land in the landing flare. And yep, pilots flying on the 757 are also certified to fly on the 767. In the eye of regulators, the two type of planes are common enough and have similar enough systems that pilots between one type can transfer to another type easily. Before we wrap up this video, I wanted to set the record straight. Although the 767 and 757 have very similar noses and common windshields, the sliding side window and the third window on the 767 are taller and deeper than on the narrow body 757. But yes, the front two windshield panes on a 757 are interchangeable on a 767 and a Boeing 777. Thanks to the incredible flight crew for letting me see their office after landing. Thank you fellow aviators, I hope you enjoyed my brief cockpit visit. If you liked what you saw, Please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more aviation related content.